Dream this moment as you run away You will only separate me from more feelings Oh my goodness Reminiscing the good old days Oh not good old days, disturb is still around Oh my goodness, I remember Back in high school, Disturbed used to be like the go-to, go-to band. But anyway, welcome back to the Sunken Keep. Sunken Keep, I have no idea what I was doing in the Sunken Keep. But I'm here anyway. In the Sunken Keep. Mm, what did we do in the last episode? I believe we killed the Mad Alchemist and I believe we killed the Queen of Smiles. Mm, I don't know what else we fought, <laughs> in all honesty, um, but in this particular episode, this is a disclaimer for those who don't know, this particular episode I shall call the Ballad of the Saltborn because I died and died and died like no man's business. I'm gonna pick up a crystal moat ring, let's enlarge the screen, increases, uh, what does it increase, let's see if that's the faithful ring. Crystal motoring, mind and body are inherently linked, but wise practitioners of my of what? Of mindfulness are able to ethereal modes of spirit, blah blah blah. Couldn't see the rest. Actually, I actually forgot to wear my freaking glasses, so mm -hmm. we are by the Kraken Cyclops. But since the figure is 2D, you, you wouldn't, the eye is not centrally focused and this is a Cyclops because he lost the other eye. But if you notice something, uh, every time the Cyclops turns, you are still able to see his eye, but the eye isn't at the center of his head. Uh, I feel that's a design mistake. But um, overall, I enjoyed the boss. This is the back entrance to fighting the boss. You'll see why I say, say so when you fight it. Funnily enough, I started off so well fighting this boss. I really, really started off well. And then I lost the rhythm of all his timings. And then we just started dying. In, in retrospect, the key to this particular boss, to be honest with you, how I understand it, is you just have to wait. The, the, the enemy doesn't have a body hitbox in the sense that when he starts moving, just by touching him you won't get hit. The only thing he has that has a hitbox uh, is the weapon itself. Only the weapon can damage you, not the body of the enemy. So if he's leaping, if he's uh, taking a step forward before he, do, he does the ground slash that has a wide AoE, his body actually won't hit you. It's only his weapon, but it seems that I had forgotten this and then I just started dying repeatedly to very simple tactics. So all you really have to do is just wait, let the attack occur, and then you roll. You have to actually delay your roll. You, if you preemptively roll, you won't give yourself enough time. Like what's happening here? Another section where I was messing up, I was rolling way too early such that the hitbox of the weapon will definitely hit you because it has a... Um, AOE effect after the strike and just like the first boss I believe it was the, uh, the first boss on the boat that shockwave does a lot of damage I dare say it does as much damage as the weapon strike itself so you have to be careful you have to roll with the delayed action as the as the attack is actually occurring but I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention to that I got the rhythm in the beginning the very first time when I met him, then halfway through the fight I just lost it. I didn't understand the timing. I don't know. It, it feels like maybe he himself could delay his attacks a little bit, but I think the timing is exactly the same. The, the boss doesn't actually change. The only thing that happens throughout the phases is that after the leaping attack, if you manage to dodge him, um, and he lands behind you, exposing his back to you, he gains one more additional attack. That additional attack could catch you if you're not paying attention. I believe it also, it also has a shockwave, but um, you can punish that attack very easily. And since I'm using the claymore, 
the strong attack of the claymore is a long range thrusting attack which does decent damage so in that regard it's not really that much of a stress but it took me quite a few tries to realize how exactly I almost killed him in my first attempt. The boss himself, in, in that regard you can say yes you died a couple of times so the boss must be hard. Uh, I don't think so. I based my first encounter of the boss as the initial difficulty. I took the boss to 8, I did about 80% of the boss's health in my first try. But then just because, I don't know, I became distracted, um, I lost all the timings. Sometimes that stuff kind of happens. And then once you lose the timings, it's just a matter of getting them back. Like crowds happening now, I've lost the timings. But I don't know if this is when I managed to realize that I just had to delay. Or maybe I was just chasing my salts. Okay, we got the salts back. I think now it's time for me to try to discover when exactly do I have to roll. Trying to figure the boss out, still not figuring him out, rolling way too early. But luckily enough, his close range attacks with that um, the slash don't really have that much of a doesn't have that much of a shockwave. Oh no, I was trying to jump through the boss there, I didn't understand that. Now I was, believe I was trying to um, experiment with shield playing to see can I actually block him. And then I realized, I think this is the time I realized I haven't put away the shield, I was like fuck that, fuck that. <laughs> I've got the timing, <laughs> I've got the timing. Oh, I was so happy when this happened and then he showed me that he has a new attack and I was like oh shit. But then I saw the timing, I was like, just delay it, just delay it. You can even see me running into him, waiting for the attack. And then I decimated him. The Cyclops, in a nutshell. A very interesting fight. I love, the thing is with this game, the art design of the characters, I believe is not so good. I don't enjoy the, uh, the art direction that they took with the actual characters of the game. Um, this could have been a time restraint or it could have been an artist's choice. Um, but the art direction they decided to take with the bosses now, I extremely enjoy that. If they put that much detail uh, into the actual in-game characters and NPCs as much as they did with the bosses and... What else has that much level of detail? Oh, dear. Like, I believe in the previous episode I was talking about the swing speed of the Claymore. Against these monsters, if you are face to face with little speed, their attack will usually land before yours. I learned that the hard way. Um, but anyway, back to what I was saying. If they put as much detail into the character designs, i.e. the player character and the NPCs, if they put as much detail as they did with the bosses and some of these beast monsters, it would really have been awesome. But I feel that the character designs and like the armor I'm wearing, really you can't really see the, the definition of the armor. The sprite is way too small, first of all. Hence, it's, it's, it's some of the aspects you have to understand of a 2D game is that you can't, depending on the perspective you take, you can't really have extremely large um, character designs. So when the, 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 the character models become small, you lose a lot of uh, resolution on the character just due to size and that way you don't really get to see the detail of the armor you don't the character well the character models themselves are just bad overall the, the design of the face and the head and the body i just don't like but that also affects the armor in this particular case the armor set is bad <laughs> you see me uh, walking around back and forth uh, when I was talking about getting distracted by the boss uh, and losing the timing, I was actually receiving phone calls. And in this particular case, I, I, was, I was taking a phone call but I didn't want to uh, proceed because one hand was on the phone while my other hand was on the keyboard, so I had nothing to control the mouse with. Um, so, I think there the call had ended. <laughs> Just a little backstory as to what was happening there. A friend of mine was inviting me for dinner. So I told him, hey, I'm kind of recording something, so I, I can't really leave just yet. But hence the length of the video. 
Uh, I had to leave ASAP. ASAP, ASAP. I saw that weird eyeball monster. I thought to myself, let me not go there now. <laughs> I got intimidated. My, my priority at this particular moment was I need to get my salts and hopefully find some form of sanctuary because I, I need to save these souls. I need to level up. The smarter person would have just went back to the same sanctuary. I could have just gone back to my old sanctuary and leveled up from there, but now I'm risking 10,000 souls. That could potentially be... I don't know how much the last level costed me. Oh, and then here I died because of the menu. I died with, Oh my goodness. Died because of the menu. 10,977 souls. Um... I believe currently at the rate of leveling up I'm at, that should be about 9 to 10 levels. Or should I just play it safe and say 8 to 9 levels worth because the cost will increase per level. So maybe 8 to 9 levels that I could potentially lose right now. Checking out which rings I can equip. Um, but I feel that the... Um, I believe it's called the Grasping Ash Ring, the one that increases salt uh, bonuses from killing enemies. I honestly believe, even though I don't know what the rest of the starting gifts do, I believe that ring is extremely helpful because the amount of salt I've had throughout this playthrough, I feel that it doesn't correlate to the number of enemies I've been killing. Like the bonus is significantly larger. It's not just maybe uh three percent more salt like for example after i think i've been playing about three hours of this game um i'm at level 17 and i feel that if i didn't have that ring and i died an equal number of times maybe i wouldn't be at level 17 maybe i would be at level 13 maybe even level 12 because the, the amount of damage i'm doing to these bosses and the amount of salt that i've spent the amount of salt I've spent um, upgrading myself, leveling up of course, upgrading the, the resources I've used to upgrade weapons and stuff like that. I feel to some extent overpowered. I don't think we should be one-shotting the enemies in this region, the sunken keep region. Uh, because with the claymore there's no monster right now that's alive that can survive more than one, one direct hit. So I feel that we might be technically overleveled, but by not that much, because our health is still our main concern. These monsters can still deal a lot of damage to us, but I don't believe there's anything we can do about that. I think your health increases just by leveling up, because I never actually saw a health stat in the stat screen. Maybe I'm blind. It just says level, then it goes straight into strength, endurance, dexterity, etc. But yeah, the amount of damage we've been doing throughout this entire playthrough has been really significantly higher. And um, even from the beginning, I guess you could just attribute the damage to just specializing in one type of weapon. We've just been putting points into strength and as our primary damage source and we've just been using strength weapons. When we're using the Morning Star, that's rating and strength really hard hitting weapon if you can get a charged attack and then we pick up a war hammer here i was like war hammer don't you already have a hammer then i was like nope this is a big war hammer my goodness just by the icon i could see that this weapon was huge then when i saw it i was like god damn almost fell off the ledge trying to use it and can't do any jumping attacks if you don't have enough stats No, trying to get back up here was a problem. <laughs> I didn't realize that you just had to jump straight up and not like angle the jump. There we go. There we go. I think we got it. Hmm. And then... In here... I had to use our morning star so that we could use the torch. See what exactly is going on here. Damage weapon is really nice. Really, really nice damage. I'm happy with it for now. I think the Mad Alchemist should be a damage check for you, for your build. When you reach this particular section, the Mad Alchemist and the Kraken, no, the, the Cyclops, 
should indicate to you do you truly have enough damage if you can defeat those bosses in quick and orderly fashion then at least you know you're doing decent damage but in this case uh, I ended up finding the, 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 the shortcut to head back and we've pretty much circled this entire area meaning that there's only one more possible location to go and that is where the eyeball is so coming in from the right hand side technically was the front entrance to the boss we attacked the boss from the back entrance using the the the, the elevator but that doesn't matter now because the boss is dead the pouncing attack of these enemies is really devastating you have to be careful of that but what's more devastating is this eyeball i don't understand what it does but all i can say is i died because of it just like that oh well thanks for watching and i will see you next time oh beautiful people so far i think i'm enjoying this game i am enjoying it much more than i enjoyed dark souls 3 maybe i'm crazy maybe i'm not i'll see you soon